Hi everybody. Today we're going to go over the rules and the consequences and it's always good to go over these every single year so we can refresh our brains what we're supposed to do in art class and also helps our new students as they're starting out in our classroom. Every day that you come into art you will be doing a mantra and we usually um, come in as you get settled I'll say let's do our mantra and then we'll go through the process of doing this. It's like a way of turning a light switch on in your brain so that you can tell your brain we're ready to do art we're done with math and science and reading and and those things are all good and fun in their own ways but this is kind of a way for us to get our brain ready and know that we need to be creative in a different way i will practice this with you later i just want you to know that is something new for most of you that are coming in from second grade our rules are exactly the same um, we practice these those of you that have been with me, we have practiced these since kindergarten. Um, a, always listen the first time. So I have some examples of the minions as we go through here, trying to like explain to you what is it that I'm looking for. So when I mean always listen, I'm looking for you to be a good listener. I usually only teach maybe five or 10 minutes, maybe 15 um, at the beginning class. Um, the longer lessons are when we get into bigger projects like clay and painting, but typically I ask you to sit quiet and listen for a 10 minute lesson. And then that will end up, if you guys listen really well, that will usually end up giving you about 35 minutes to do actual art because we also need to have time for cleanup, which gives us a total of 15, 50 minutes to do art. Um, the things I'm looking for are basically the same things we did when we did Mona Lisa in the classroom. Um, our little minion here is being a really good example of how we should be looking and listening. Um, our mouth should be quiet. Our ears are listening. One of the things we don't talk about um, when you're younger is also about your brain thinking about what is being said. So you're not just listening to the noises around you. You're actually thinking about the words that are being presented to you, either for me or somebody else in the classroom. Your eyes are looking either at me or they're looking at whoever's talking or the video that's playing. They shouldn't be looking at your neighbors. They shouldn't be looking at something at your table or something you're playing with. They should be focused on what is happening at the front of the classroom during our lesson. And you should have your hands and your feet down and still. So this means if there's items on your tables, like pencils and erasers, you should not be playing with those. Those just sit there until it's time for us to use them. At a third, fourth, and fifth grade level, you should be able to just let those sit there and not play with them. If you have a problem and you know yourself and you know that you need to touch things, then let me know and we can have you sit somewhere that maybe you won't be so distracted. The next one is respect my teachers friends and supplies. So this one is a big one in the art room. We don't have a lot of supplies and um, we have to be very thoughtful about what we do have so that we can use it year after year and even just day after day with the kids that come through after you and before you sometimes. So as you're using our supplies, be respectful um, and your teachers and your friends. So again, the minions are going to give us some example here. Raise your hand when you speak. That's respectful to me when I'm teaching. It's respectful to your classmates. I know it's really tempting to talk to the person next to you if you have a question or you want to share an idea that you, you're thinking about. But when you do that, it's not respectful. It means if you're talking to the kid next to you, they can't hear what I'm teaching them about the new art lesson or the project or some cool fun material we get to use. So that's being disrespectful to your classmate. It's also being disrespectful to me as your teacher. So just raise your hand before you speak. Even if it's a whisper to your neighbor, you shouldn't be talking then. Use kind words. So when you go off to do your art projects and you're working, sometimes you can get frustrated with your classmates because they are doing things that are bothersome to you. Try to use kind, kind words. If that's not working, then you need to let me know. I don't always know if you're fighting or just having a disagreement. So sometimes if it gets beyond your control, let me know. And that's why we have the Bobcat Den, which we'll talk a little bit more about after this video. And you'll have a space where you can go if somebody's bothering you. But 
most of the time kids just aren't using kind words when they get too frustrated. And that's what I'm here to help with. If you've tried it yourself and you've tried to handle it, then, then let me know. Another one that it's a big one in the art room is use the right voice level. I don't have a picture of the poster right now, but I'll point it out on the wall. There is a poster up there that we use all the time about voice levels. And your voice level when you're working will sometimes alter, but it's usually going to be a zero if I'm talking or a level one or two, which is a whisper or just like a normal talking voice. So that way we don't interrupt other people's creativity as they are trying to work because when we get really loud, it is really hard to focus on being creative. And the next one is just be a good friend. Share your supplies, share your space the best you can. Sometimes being a good friend is getting up and going to the bobcat den because you need, you need some space. Um, keep your hands and your feet to yourself. Sometimes we get a little goofy, especially during cleanup. Our hands and our feet should not be on somebody in an unkind way. So if you, again, if you are feeling frustrated, overwhelmed, before you get to this point, you should let me know, or you should just get up and go to the Bobcat Den. Use your manners and say please and thank you. It always is very helpful if you need something. Instead of grabbing it from somebody, you could ask them, could I please use that marker when you're done with it? Could I please use the scissors when you're finished with it? And if they let you, then say thank you. The last one, you know, this is a big one for me. Just try your best. There's so many options in art class. You get to be so creative. Um, sometimes it's a little overwhelming because you get to do so many things, but just try your best. And if it doesn't work out, that's okay. That's part of the learning process in art. Um, sometimes we make things and it doesn't work. Sometimes I make things and it turns out really bad and that's okay. I probably learned something through it, through that process. Um, I just found the little minions here and I can see it's cutting it off, but it just says, try to do your best work. I like his little tongue hanging out and he's like focusing so hard on hitting that, that nail. So try your best that you can. One of the big things I need you to try your best with is when it's cleanup time. This says clean up after yourself and respect the classroom. So I do not have time in between classes to clean up and I'm not really meant to clean up after you. My job is to get you your supplies, make sure I um, help you with behavior, keep things organized, teach you about art. My job is not coming around and cleaning up after you. And if that does happen, if there are tables or certain kids that I'm always having to clean up after, then we will talk about a consequence that you will typically have. Oftentimes, I will give you a reminder. And then if it happens again, I will usually take a lot of the supplies away. Um, sometimes I will take away the whole tub that you get to use with all of the markers and crayons and scissors and stuff. And that day you might just have limited supplies. Um, so keep that in mind. I don't like doing that, but I have to always keep in mind that kids are coming in after you and they need those supplies. So if you don't keep them nice, then that affects all the other kids that come in after you or before you. And the last one is help each other out. If you notice somebody struggling, um, help them out. That does not give you permission to grab things out of people's hands though. If you're helping, you are giving nice quiet reminders, nice gentle reminders. You're helping them put things away. If you are grabbing things out of their hand because they have not cleaned up fast enough, then that's not helping. That's just taking over and that you're getting in their bubble and that's going to make somebody upset. If somebody is not cleaning up and they refuse, that's when you would raise your hand and let me know. I usually see that. Remember um, for my Friends that have returned, if you ask me, I sometimes give you that little extra time if you need it, and I let your table mates know so they don't get frustrated with you. Um, we're gonna be practicing something a little bit more in the art room. We're gonna be doing creative quiet. I will discuss this slide a little bit more. Um, we didn't do this much last year um, because I couldn't get it to work. So I wanted this slide is really helpful to remind you that it's creative quiet. So we'll spend some more time on that. It's usually just like the, the sidebar shows there, it's usually 10 minutes or 20 minutes, depending on the project that we're doing. We don't do this every single day. There's some days we're just a little noisier than others, but 
creative quiet gives your brain a chance to to not have all of the talking and disruptions and it's amazing how much um imagination you will have as you are just sitting in that quiet and you have mm -hmm. supplies in front of you and you're um, able to focus on your art and the next part is consequences so i we have some positive consequences we're going to go over the ones that we don't often like we will go over the positive consequences tomorrow but the consequences that you may have if you're doing things you shouldn't i will usually come around and give you a warning a first time warning and that is just like my reminder to you to think about it like think about what you're doing why would mrs luck walk over to you and tell you that she's not um, fond of something you're doing right now if i'm taking my time away from helping other students to tell you that you are doing something that is bothersome to your classmates or disruptive that means you are doing something that is bothersome or, or disruptive. Otherwise, I will not be bothering you. I will let you do what you're, you're working on. But take that as an opportunity to fix what you're doing. It's a short period of time that you're with me every other day. So um, fix it up so that you can continue to do the art and the fun things that we're doing. If I have to give you a second warning within that art time that we're together, it's going to be a five minute break at least, sometimes 10 until you have calmed down. Oftentimes I'll have you sit. I have three sit out spots. It's like the Bobcat Den. Um, a lot of teachers call it the Bobcat Den. I call it sit out spots um, where you just sit out and you calm down. Some of those places have nothing there so you can calm. Some of them have books. Um, some of them, sometimes I'll let you just bring your artwork over there so that you're off by yourself and you're you're not around everyone else. If we still have issues after we have had a warning, after I've had you sit down and calm, then you get an oops note from me. The oops note is something that goes home to your parents. I also send an email as well, letting them know that that note is coming home. Um, if I don't get the oops note back, here's an example of it. If I do not get the oops note back, then what I do is I call home. So you have from the time I give you the oops note until the next time I see you, which is two days, you have to you have that amount of time to bring it to your parents, let them know what was going on and bring it back to me. This, again, is another way for you to correct your behavior. After this, after we've gone through this process, then that's when I will start calling the office. That's when you start having more write-ups. So keep that in mind. Um, if for some reason somebody does something that is hurting someone else, calling names like swearing, those are things that go automatically to the principal's office. And or you might have um, another adult come down and talk to you or you might um, go out of the room and, and work with somebody on those behaviors that you did and how you can correct them so you can come back into the art room and make things a lot more enjoyable for yourself and all of the rest of the class as well. And that is the end. We have more things to go through later, but right now that is the end of our rules.